Folks, I wanted to do a practical PID tuning video for you for this Yashin Falcon 210 Frankenstein. I've been calling it putting lipstick on a pig copter because I put bump BS, BL Heli S ESCs on it. I put Multirotor Mania Titan motors on it. I uh, put the Run Cam Eagle on it. So I think I improved the camera and uh, I thought, well, let's just see how good I can make it fly. And I did record the tuning and unfortunately the, um, the OSD, I used the OSD to tune the PIDs but I had the camera set to NTSC and the OSD set to PAL. And as a result, the actual OSD didn't get recorded by my DVR. How weird is that? So I'm just going to show you the before and after. It's not really going to be a practical PID tuning, just a before and after. And I'll comment on the flight characteristics of the copter in this before video. And then I'll show you after of how good I got it and, <laughs> and what ultimately happened to it at the end of the day. The first thing you're going to see me doing here is just centering the sticks and seeing how well the copter holds its attitude. The gimbals on this transmitter do not recenter worth a darn. They're really bad. Now, I thought that this transmitter was the same as the Flysky FSI-6, but I'm told that it's not. I'm told that superficially they're very similar, but the gimbals on the Eoshin one are much, much worse than the gimbals on the Flysky one. So, fine. What you see me doing here is I'm, I'm wondering if I'm even in auto level mode. See that roll to the left there? I didn't do that with the stick. I, I just centered the stick and the copter rolled to the left that much. And right now when you see me flying level, I'm actually putting in right roll. So it's a real mess. I added some dead band to the, trans, uh, to the uh, beta flight to try and deal with that. And it made it a little better and manageable, but it's not great by any means. When I take off here, this yaw to the right is something to do with the PID loop not liking the fact that we're on the ground, and I didn't do that on the sticks or anything, and that's not even the dead band. So that, again, is a tuning issue I had to deal with. The copter feels very loose and slidey in the turns, and you can see some prop wash as uh, it slides backwards in these sharp turns. That's something I would raise D-gain to try and solve, but it's hardly the most uh, pressing issue that I'm trying to solve right now. The copter's flying slower than I usually fly it because I don't have much up tilt at all put in. Uh, and that's because I'm planning, if anyone's going to fly this, it's going to be like a rank beginner. We're getting some prop wash right there. Very rough prop wash for such a gentle turn. And I know these ESCs are capable of doing better. They're BL Heli S ESCs, and these are 4-inch props on 2204, 2300 kV motors. The motors have more than enough torque to push that little prop, and the ESCs can definitely handle it. Here comes a roll. Not terrible, not terrible. There was times when I was flying this where I forgot that if you're doing stick arming, that you lose yaw authority when you lower the stick below min check, and the, the back end of the copter would spin out, and I wouldn't know why I'd forgotten that I had lowered the throttle below min check and had lost that authority. So if you ever see that happen, I'll point it out, and that's what's going on there. I've been so long since I flew with stick arming that, uh, that I completely forgot that fact. I'm, I'm trying to fly a little aggressively here, but I just can't do it because the copter feels so imprecise in turns, and that's a, a factor with low yaw P-gain. I ultimately raise the yaw P-gain by like from like 60 to like 100 to like 95 maybe, and it gets much, much better. Prop wash. Now I'm doing some throttle, uh, climbing out and lowering the throttle and letting the, the copter drop to try and see how the eye gain is. You see the nose pitch back there. If the nose does not hold its attitude when you drop the throttle and fall, there, you see me swing wide here. That's the yaw axis being weird. Oh, having a little trouble. <laughs> If the copter does not hold its attitude when you raise the throttle and then drop the throttle, that means you need more pitch eye gain. Here's the final PIDs I ended up with. I'll talk first about the yaw uh, axis. Uh, I, ra I raised the yaw P gain to make the copter feel sort of more controlled, more track better in turns. That's something I do on basically every copter I fly that I feel like the uh, default yaw P gain is too low for me. I don't feel very precise in turns with it. I think the default is like six for beta flight 3.0. This one I got to 80 and it felt pretty good. I kept pushing it up because my theory is if 80 is good, maybe 90 is better. Keep raising it till something bad happens. Around 95, as I started to take off, the copter just yawed crazily to the left. It wasn't like a whirling dervish crazy, but something was clearly not right. I lowered it back down to 90. The copter was very controllable. That 
yaw to the right that you saw as I took off that one time also stopped happening. So there was a relatively narrow range of good yaw P values that would cause the copter to feel good in handling and not have any sort of weird problems when I was taking off. I didn't touch the roll and pitch P gains at all. I just, I feel like the, I'm kind of tired of this copter. I don't feel like it's going to be flown at like ultra high rates. Uh, because it's probably going to be a beginner who's flying it. And so trying to get flips and rolls to have a really sharp stop at the end was not really necessary because it's not going to have super high rates anyway. So it was fine. It felt okay while flying it. And I just said, fine, leave that alone. The eye gains went way up on pitch and roll. Part of that is because to get the copter to hold attitude when the throttle changes. But part of it is also because there this the gimbals are so bad on this transmitter I wanted the copter to have a really stiff feel. So this is, I don't know, I just invented this, and I don't know how well it's going to work overall, but it feels like it was a good thing to do. Raising the eye gain makes the copter feel stiff and unresponsive on an axis, and so I wanted that because the gimbal is not recentering correctly and is kind of wobbling all over the place. The eye gain is kind of giving me a pseudo dead band. And I ended up at 80 and 60, and I felt like the copter did a pretty good job of holding its attitude when I punched the throttle and chopped the throttle. Finally, on the D gains, I raised the D gains. No signs of hot motors, and I just kept raising them. I ended up around 50. I could refine this a little more, but I felt like the ultimate prop wash handling in sharp turns was pretty good, much better than I would expect from a copter that is sort of flying like this one is, which is not spectacular. But I was like, okay, good enough. There you go. So I'm going to show you my last couple tuning flights now. Uh, the last sort of – these are my demo flights. And um, you, again, I remind you that there – I forgot that the yaw axis stops working when you go to min check. So there's at least one time safe you can spot it where the copter – it almost looks like a fail safe, but it's only not responding on the yaw axis. And uh, then at the end, you'll see why – you'll see my last crash, which I think was a fail safe because the copter just became completely unresponsive. And uh, I'll give you my final thoughts about this copter. Well, I call that a success. And that is the last that you will ever see of this copter on my channel, and hopefully the last that I will ever see of it. The um, I've replaced the motors, I've replaced the ESC, I've replaced the camera. I did replace the flight controller one time, but with the exact same flight controller because it has a weirdo uh, micro connector on it for the ESCs, and I didn't want to have to resolder everything. So uh, the only thing left to replace is the transmitter and the receiver, which if you end up owning this copter after me, I would highly recommend. You could learn to fly on this reasonably with the one that's there, but it's kind of going to be fighting you every step of the way. And I wasn't that far away when I fail safe there. I'm kind of shocked if indeed that was a fail safe. And I'm gonna, I've got a black box log and I'm going to check and see whether uh, that was a fail safe. If the receiver, I, I don't even, anyway. 
So um, yeah, basically the Eachine Falcon 210 is an okay copter if you replace every single thing on it except the frame. The frame took that hit just fine. Zero damage to the frame, and as near as I can tell, almost no damage to the internals except that now the video transmitter doesn't work anymore. And I don't know why, and I'm never going to know why. I don't care why I'm done with this copter. Uh, that's all for now. Happy flying.